And I just wanted to take a moment and, and bring all the people in. We don't we don't want people standing in the door because we would like to share this project with as many people as possible because we're really proud of it. So come on in. We want to, we want to share with as many people as possible. Since we're taking a little break, do we have extra forms for the new guests to fill out? interesting things happen throughout the course of our vehicle development. Um, I think we went through the entire project about six or seven times. The last time we did it was over winter break and I think we, we started from scratch and we basically did the entire project in about three or four days because each time we did it we got the learning curve went down, we got more efficient and just better at it overall. So what you're looking at really is the, the, the differences between uh, the two largest iterations, our beginning iteration and our final iteration. And I want to point out some of the features between the two pictures. Um, you can see in the first one, it's a very boxy design. It looks a little clunky. It uh, has a very tall roll hoop, very, very high roll hoop. Uh, the driver is sitting almost vertical, which gives you a very high uh, center of gravity. And in a vehicle, you want your center of gravity as low as possible because that is where uh, you know, affects how your vehicle rolls during turns. So the lower your center of gravity, the better your performance will be. Um, and you come over here on the second one, and you can see that the driver is reclined. The, the engine has been pushed back. And the entire area around the engine is much more tightly integrated. You can see over here, here's just the engine, and there's really nothing around it. There's just, you know, the uh, roll hoop support bracing going from the top to the bottom. But here we have a uh, very well triangulated structure that's tightly like, uh, very tightly integrated with the engine. I think there's only like a quarter inch or half inch of clearance to get the engine in and out. So it's going to be very tight with packaging, but um, it made a really well designed chassis. Um, and you can see the, the the structure of the chassis looks more like an aerodynamic car, and it's just better packaged all around. So uh, it also has improved ergonomics and much better torsional stiffness. So we're pretty proud of the last picture. Which brings me to is there still a Lego head under that black helmet? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> if you lift up, if you lift up the visor, you see the Lego head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this this brings us to our final product, which is you know the bread and butter of our project, and we're really really proud of it. Um, you got your wheel package, hubs, your uprights, your suspension points, your rocker rocker pivot point, and up here you have your steering and the driver. And I'm going to hand off to Mike, who's going to talk about manufacturing. Manufacturing basically started around as soon as we could, basically. And the first thing we had to build was a gigantic table, because this car is pretty big. And I encourage all of you guys to come see it. The frame is in the big room, and you should come and check it out, because it's pretty cool. This table was actually donated to us from Tommy Riggins at Riggins Engineering. And the steel, I think, was O'Neill steel. So all of this stuff was actually donated to UNF. We just had to paint it, make it look nice, and basically stock it with all the steel you see underneath. And this is actually at UNF on the back loading dock. They provided us with the space. Chassis started with the bottom rail. So you take the bottom rail and lay it all out in X and Y, which is pretty simple. You just have wooden jigs. And the one thing that made it a little more difficult was that we didn't value very highly design for manufacturing. We didn't think about it. None of us had manufacturing class yet. And it was basically, we had, you would think this angle would be 90, but it's actually 88.3 degrees. So that was kind of a difficult process right. getting this over. We actually did this, myself and Justin did this piece uh, three or four times, yeah. I think. <laughs> we, couldn't <figure laughs> right. we couldn't figure out why it wasn't lining up. And it turns out it's 88.3 degrees, so lesson learned. <laughs> this is Pete doing what he does. <laughs> <laughs> This is uh, the main roll loop going up. So we actually jigged the roll loop in its own flat plane in a wooden jig, welded this cross piece in, and then stood it up with a level on it to make sure it was straight. That was, I think that was the only 90 on the chassis, actually. So you can see this is the engine compartment back here, and it just goes, I think, seven feet that way, and all the, all the wooden stanchions. 
We actually chose wood. We started with metal, but it turns out that we're not very good with working with metal, so we went right to wood as soon as we could, and it was it proved to be a lot easier. Uh, this is Al. He's he's welding when intermediate section of the chassis. Uh, this is the side rail that goes all the way across. And we actually split the chassis up into three manufacturing steps. So you start with the front bulkhead, which is where the steering goes. So from here forward is actually the front bulkhead. Here's the side rail, and then the uh, the engine compartment's in the back. This is the front bulkhead completed and the side completed. You can see all the clamps down here. We used every clamp in Miss Jean's lab yeah. to construct this, and she has like 23, I think. So this is the finished chassis, and uh, it's pretty sweet. I'll just let that sink in for a <laughs> This is the wheel package. This was actually made off-site. UNF doesn't have a CNC lathe or any CNC milling equipment. They have a manual lathe, which is really good for, and we learned later that we could have used it to take down a lot of the, um, the bulk off of these. We got these giant stock aluminum cylinders, and we could have actually spent some time in taking, taking them down, but we wanted to go for as precise as possible because with these bearings, you need to have zero clearance in between them. So we went right for a CNC lathe. This is made at, I think his name is Jeff Thompson. Yeah, right oh, he is. Oh, hi. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, this is the EDM machine. This is actually the upright being manufactured. And this block of aluminum, I would never seen this and thought it was really cool. I think there's a picture of it, too. It's on a lathe. So this is a, a block of aluminum on a lathe. And this will spin at ridiculous RPMs, which I thought it would <laughs> this is the finished product, so he bored a hole right through there. This is the mill at uh, UNF. My head. The bearing cups were done using this. So you have your bearing cup, which is chromoly, and it's very hard to manufacture chromoly. It takes a lot of time. So you have to take hundreds of an inch off, numerous passes, to try and get this through. And this took numerous hours. I think this took the longest out of any of the processes that we did. Uh, this is one of the finished A arms. The way we went about this is the paper is printed out of solid work. So you print out your, your 2D sketch and you wrap it around the tube with the profile already cut out. And then you manually take a, a bench grinder and grind this profile down and then check and fit. Oh, it doesn't fit. Take a little bit off in this direction. Check and fit. And you keep doing that until it fits perfectly. Uh, this is finished A arm. You can see the paper still on there. These are the angular bear, or, uh, the, the uh, joints that go on there. And here's the uh, finished bearing cut. And that's Al doing what he does. <laughs> this is the overall budget. You can see the total down here, just over $9,200. Yeah. Challenges and difficulties. This project really, we had a lot of support from UNF, but there's just some things that they couldn't provide us with. And mainly it was manufacturing equipment, so CNC milling. We're working with a lot of other senior design teams in a small lab with one lathe. Everybody needs to use the lathe, so there's a line. So that, that was a big challenge, and if it wasn't for, for Mr. Thompson, we, we probably wouldn't even finish the video. <laughs> Logistical delays was another thing. We had the chassis tubes actually came in a big box from VR3, but some of those tubes were incorrectly profiled. So we had to manually profile those, and it turned out that they, Justin actually caught the error and sent it in to them, and they gave us the new tube, but the chassis was already welded, yeah. so we took the chassis apart, put it back together with the new tubes, and it, it fit pretty well. Delayed shipments, we're actually still waiting on a shipment. We have some bearings that are holding us up, that's why the car is in pieces right now, and uh, it's been kind of frustrating because we, want, we wanted to just roll this in here and have like neon lights coming out of it and all this cool stuff. But it's in pieces, it still looks pretty cool, and we hope to have the bearings pretty soon to where the, the wheels will actually be on and be able to turn. Uh, lessons learned. Design for manufacturability was the biggest lesson we learned, and measure five times, cut once, I can personally testify to that. Yeah. Make friends with civil engineers. There's one big welder at UNF, and there's also a steel bridge team, and they weld a lot, and we made friends with them pretty quickly, and learn to, to work with other teams outside of our own scope. Networking with local community. I think half of the people in this room are from the local community that have helped out in one way or another, and seriously guys, without your help, this, this wouldn't have even happened. Yeah. We did, we, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to thank everybody, but this is, this is like part one of 17 of everyone who helped out. I just can't stress enough how much help we had. Any questions? <laughs> this is Justin doing what he does. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Actually, I wanted to take a moment and just uh, give us a little plug in and tell you a little bit about our project. Uh, what we're doing and the mission that we've taken on represents more than just a senior design project. It's actually a small scope of a much larger scheme that uh, represents the Society of Automotive Engineers Formula SAE competition, which we brought to, you know, not just we, but you know, all the Austria Racing members in the back of the room uh, joined together and worked, have worked really, really hard to bring this program to the school, so hopefully we can continue it in the future. But this is UNF's first Formula SAE race car, and we're pretty proud of that.